Welcome to video problem 21, where we explain the basics of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. While being easier to apply than the fundamental laws, Faraday's law of induction is not a fundamental law and it will fail in some rare cases. This is illustrated presently by looking at the Faraday's disk generator. So what is Faraday's uh, law of electromagnetic induction? In order to explain this, let's consider uh, this uh, stationary part C, uh, which is bounding a surface S, as shown on the figure here. And assume that there is some uh, background magnetic flux density uh, that we can uh, see on the figure as well. Obviously, this magnetic flux density will give rise to a magnetic flux uh, through the loop, or more generally, uh, flux linkage that can be determined by the expression here. What Michael Faraday uh, discovered back in 1831 is that if this flux linkage through the loop changes with time, there will be an induced electromotive force along the path uh, of uh, uh, along the path that we have uh, sketched over there. And this ele induced electromotive force uh, is given as this uh, negative uh, time derivative of uh, the flux uh, linking the loop. We know that the uh, induced electromotive force is the circulation integral of the electric field uh, along this path here. So what uh, Faraday's law uh, of induction is telling us is that the changing magnetic flux induces an electric field. And then of course this electric field will give rise to the electromotive force. If you place a physical circuit like a wire along this path, the induced uh, field will cause an induced current to flow along the wire. And of course the interesting question is what will be the direction of this induced current? And this direction is always, always governed by this uh, negative sign uh, that we have uh, in Faraday's uh, law of induction. The induced current will flow in such a direction that the flux it produces uh, tends to cancel or oppose the change in the original flux. Please note the induced current will oppose the change in the original flux and not the flux itself. And in order to illustrate this, uh, let's consider uh, first the case where this uh, field, which is in this direction here, increases as a function of time. It essentially means uh, that this time derivative of the flux linkage through the loop is positive, meaning that the induced electromotive force is negative. And uh, this uh, essentially means that the electric field uh, induced along the path or uh, the wire is predominantly in the direction opposite to our DL element. This means that there will be an induced current in the direction as uh, sketched on the figure. And you can see here that this current here is giving rise to a flux which will circulate like this, and it is actually uh, this flux which is opposing uh, the change, in this case the increase of the original flux. Uh, the negative sign here uh, is uh, the assertion provided by this negative sign is what we call uh, Lenz law and it will help us determine the direction of the induced current. If on the other hand uh, the background field which is in this particular direction decreases as a function of time, uh, the wire will respond by sending uh, an induced current in this particular direction. Obviously now the B field is circulating in this particular direction, so the wire uh, will actually produce uh, this uh, this induced current that will try to send more flux and thus oppose the decrease in the original flux. And this is essentially the basics of uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Now the induced electromotive force uh, can be actually induced uh, by several means. Uh, we can have a stationary circuit in a time varying B field. Uh, this is called a transformer EMF. We can also have uh, the case of a moving circuit in a static uh, B field, and this is called motional EMF. And then you can have uh, the most general case of a moving circuit in a time varying B field. All of those cases are governed by this uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And uh, on the following slide, uh, we will see how the first two cases can actually be explained in terms of certain fundamental laws. So the first case uh, to consider is uh, the transformer EMF. Uh, to this end, we consider uh, a static circuit that we can uh, see here 
and this circuit is residing in the region of uh, time varying uh, flux density that we have uh, also depicted on this figure. The induced electromotive force is the circulation integral of the electric field along the path of our static circuit and in order to explain this one we have to recall uh, the fundamental Maxwell Faraday's law which essentially states that the circulation of the electric field intensity along this closed path C uh, is uh, the negative uh, of this surface uh, integral of the time derivative of our time varying magnetic flux density. Now since the circuit uh, in question is static uh, which means it doesn't change over time the partial derivatives uh, included here can be taken outside of the integral sign in which case uh, they become ordinary uh, derivatives as indicated here. What we have left uh, over here is nothing else than the magnetic flux or more generally uh, the magnetic uh, flux linkage in this particular case. So uh, we end up uh, with uh, Faraday's induction uh, law which in uh, this uh, present case is explained by Maxwell uh, Faraday's law. The second example, uh, the second case that we want to illustrate uh, is uh, that of uh, motion on EMF and uh, to this end we consider uh, the circuit uh, sketched on the figure over here. Uh, we have a metal uh, bar which is uh, sliding over this uh, U-shaped uh, stationary conducting rails and the whole uh, circuit uh, resides in the region of uh, static and uniform uh, B-field uh, which is uh, directed uh, out of the plane of the screen. Uh, the height of our bar is H and we have introduced the coordinate system as shown so that the bar moves in the positive X direction with this particular uh, velocity U. If you consider, uh, for instance, a single charged particle inside of this bar, because it uh, is moving uh, in the region of a uh, background field, background flux density, of course there will be a magnetic force acting uh, on this one, which is determined by this fundamental uh, law uh, that I have sketched over there. Now to an observer which is moving with the metal bar and thus with the charged particle there is no apparent motion and the magnetic force uh, can in fact be interpreted as uh, an electric force. Uh, and uh, we know that the electric force uh, definition wise is the product of the charge and the electric field. So uh, in this particular case uh, the magnetic force uh, per unit charge can in fact be interpreted as an induced electric field which is then uh, given by the expression here. In this case uh, the induced electromotive force i.e. the motional uh, EMF uh, is the circulation of the electric field intensity along this uh, uh, closed uh, rectangular path C and uh, we replace the electric field uh, so we have to integrate this quantity along this uh, closed path. Obviously, uh, only uh, the part of the circuit which is moving uh, in the direction not parallel uh, to the B field and thus essentially cutting the magnetic flux will uh, contribute to this uh, integral uh, here. And uh, obviously that is going to be this segment of our integration curve. Uh, here uh, the L uh, is in the positive uh, Y direction. Uh, U, which is our velocity, is in the positive X direction and B is in the positive Z direction, which is uh, the direction indicated over here. So this integral here will give us uh, the quantity uh, over here. U cross B will be in the minus uh, Y hat uh, direction and this will be uh, the magnitude of this uh, cross product. And now when we dot these two unit vectors, we get unity. So the result in this case will first be minus h times u times b. Now since the speed is the time derivative of this spatial uh, coordinate x, we can replace u with the x over dt and uh, finally move uh, these time derivatives outside and what you have left uh, inside is h times x which is the surface area which is changing uh, with time because the bar is moving and you are multiplying this surface area 
with the magnitude of the flux density and this is of course recognized as magnetic flux or more generally magnetic flux linkage that I have included here. So in this case uh, we again uh, note that the induced electromotive force here is given in terms of uh, Faraday's induction law but it is explained uh, in terms of this fundamental magnetic force law. We can then, of course, have the most uh, general uh, situation of a moving circuit in a time-varying B field. Uh, in this case, uh, the circuit can move here with a certain velocity and reside in a time-varying field. And also our circuit here can then move uh, uh, with this velocity in the region of this background time-varying field. And in this case, uh, the total EMF induced in such circuits uh, will be the sum of transformer and motional EMFs. And what is important to note here is that also in those cases uh, Faraday's uh, law of induction, uh, which is given down here, uh, will give you the induced electromotive force. It is uh, interesting uh, to note that uh, these cases here are governed uh, by Faraday's uh, induction law. However, uh, Faraday's induction uh, law is not a fundamental law like, for instance, Maxwell-Faraday's law and this magnetic force law. And we have some very few cases in which Faraday's law of induction will fail. And this is something I want to illustrate uh, on the following slide by looking at Faraday's disk generator. So this is the configuration of the Faraday's uh, disk generator. Uh, we have a circular uh, metal disk uh, of radius B, which is uh, circulating around this axis uh, with a constant uh, angular velocity omega. The disk uh, resides uh, in the region of uh, static and uniform magnetic flux density that we can see here. Uh, and the uh, flux density is uh, parallel with the axis of rotation with uh, this particular direction. We provide here a set of contacts uh, so that we can uh, measure the induced electromotive force as the disk is rotating uh, and this electromotive force will appear uh, across these open circuit terminals in terms of this open circuit voltage. And the objective is then to determine uh, this one by using first Faraday's induction law. An obvious case uh, to consider uh, here will be this rectangular path. Uh, uh, and uh, if we integrate the electric field uh, intensity along this path, uh, uh, this is uh, going to give us the induced electromotive force. Now, uh, obviously, as the disk is rotating, there will be no magnetic flux uh, through the surface uh, uh, bounded by this path uh, C, and thus there will be no changing uh, flux through that particular surface. So in this case, uh, Faraday's induction law uh, will tell us that we have a zero uh, open circuit voltage uh, over there. And this is, of course, uh, not true for our Faraday's uh, disk generator, and this essentially shows that uh, Faraday's induction law fails uh, for that particular uh, curve uh, shown uh, over there. Now, when uh, Faraday's induction law fails, uh, we have uh, one of uh, uh, the fundamental laws that we can use, and uh, since this is uh, the case of a moving circuit in a static field, uh, the, relevant, uh, uh, the relevant law here is uh, the one based on uh, magnetic force, uh, in which case uh, the induced electric field uh, is given as this uh, cross product between the linear velocity u of our disk and the background uh, field b. Now, uh, on the account of uh, our previous uh, discussion, it is only the part of the circuit uh, which is moving in the direction not parallel to the b field and thus crossing or cutting uh, the magnetic flux that will contribute to this integral and obviously that's the path uh, that we can uh, see indicated over here. So the contribution uh, to this circulation integral will stem only from this particular path 2 prime uh, to 3. Uh, in order to, uh, in order to uh, actually evaluate this integral, uh, first of all uh, we need to link our linear velocity uh, here uh, with the angular velocity that was provided in the assignment. 
and also we have to set up the correct integration limits and also figure out what this particular DL element is in this particular case. Now you can consider uh, Faraday's uh, disk uh, from the top and uh, uh, devote your attention here to a single uh, point here which is located at uh, distance r from the center uh, of the disk. Now in time uh, dt uh, the disk will rotate uh, with this amount d phi and that will correspond uh, to our point uh, moving from uh, that particular place along this arc to this particular place. Now the length of this arc uh, from the figure you can see it's given by the expression here and uh, the time derivative of this uh, length here is uh, of course uh, equal to the magnitude of our uh, linear velocity that you can see here. If I replace uh, the length of the arc P with R times d phi uh, and then recognize uh, this uh, change of the coordinate with respect to time uh, as our angular uh, velocity or angular speed, we obtain this particular link between the angular velocity and the linear velocity. Now, having established this, we also note that the linear velocity is in, is in the phi direction. So we have that one, which we'll have to cross with the B field, which is in the Z direction. The integration limits uh, in this particular case, uh, they will go from B to zero, and uh, the DL element uh, on that part of the integration uh, curve is given by the expression here. If you plug everything uh, here, uh, you get uh, the expression that you can see over there. Now I have to cross phi uh, unit vector with Z unit vector. This will be in the radial direction, which when dotted with this uh, radial unit vector, of course, gives unity. And uh, the rest is quite easy to integrate. And after uh, setting uh, your integration limits, uh, you end up uh, with the result here, which is the final uh, expression for the induced electromotive force and thus uh, the open circuit voltage uh, of our Faraday's uh, disk generator configuration. So now we are uh, basically finished with this uh, video problem uh, and here you can see the main results. Uh, so what we see here is Faraday's law of induction. Uh, a changing magnetic flux uh, or flux linkage induces an electromotive force. As usual, we have a few tasks for you. The first one uh, is illustrated uh, on the figure over here. We have a generator which is connected to a solenoidal inductor uh, above which a metal ring that you can see here is suspended. Once the generator is turned on, there will be a current uh, in the solenoid which gives rise uh, to the magnetic flux density as shown on the figure. Your task will then be to determine the direction of the induced current in the ring and also to explain if the ring will get uh, repelled or attracted by the solenoid. The second task is related uh, to Faraday uh, disk uh, generator uh, that we have uh, just uh, considered and that I have resketched on the figure uh, down here. Uh, and in this task, I would actually ask uh, you to use uh, the Faraday's law of induction as applied to this particular part that you can see here uh, in order uh, to determine the open circuit voltage uh, VO. Uh, as a guide or a hint, uh, please note that the magnetic flux uh, linking uh, this particular path is the flux which will pass through this wedge-shaped area uh, that you can see uh, over here. So thank you very much for your kind attention.